Hey guys, Raya here. Earlier this year, I was gifted this Arduino Uno kit to learn about tinkering with electronics and programming. Watch as I give it a try. The kit comes with a disc to get the instructions, library, and code for all the projects. It's also on their website for download. There are tons of pieces in the kit to do all 24 included projects. The most important part of the kit is the Arduino Uno itself, which is the circuit board and microcontroller, essentially a computer chip. It connects to the computer by USB. I don't claim to be an expert in this field at all, so everything I say from here on out is definitely a basic understanding, and please take it with a grain of salt. I decided to do the first 10 lessons to start. The first lesson is actually just setting everything up on your computer. The guide is really easy to understand with step-by-step -step instructions for installing the program, loading in libraries, and making sure the computer and circuit board are communicating. Lesson two was pretty basic, just sending a pre-written code to the device to make a little light blink on the board to ensure everything is working correctly. The program pulls up a window for each saved piece of code and is really user-friendly to be able to just push the code right to the device with one click. You can see the little yellow light started blinking right away, so I moved on to the next lesson. This third lesson was also pretty easy, but it was the first lesson using the breadboard. The task was to set up a quick little path to illuminate an LED. Each lesson started by listing the components needed, so I gathered all those first. Then it went in depth on the actual science of the electrical path, explaining all the pieces and their functions. I was glad this kit came with a breadboard to eliminate the need to do any soldering, since I don't think I'm ready to start doing that. I followed the instructions to put in the LED, then the resistor, and then the two male-to-male -male jumper wires to connect the power and the ground. This lesson didn't require any code since the circuit board has a 5 volt port and can just work as power for a functioning circuit. I plugged it in and it worked. I followed the lesson to switch out the resistor for a couple others of higher value. Basically the higher the number the more it resists the power flow, so in this situation that gives less power to the LED and makes it dimmer. This is a cool side-by-side -side comparison of three different resistors. I also tried it with a different color LED, just for fun. Lesson 4 built on the basic LED lesson and was a bit more complicated since it involved an RGB LED. There was again a lot of information about how an RGB LED works. This project required a lot more pieces, since there are three light channels in an RGB, so there needs to be a wire to communicate with each channel, and a resistor to control the current, and then there needs to be grounding wire for the whole thing. Honestly, the trickiest part was just getting everything in the right shape to fit the holes on the breadboard, so I got out pliers since everything was so small. I realized I put the ground wire in the wrong spot. It needed to be next to the ground pin on the LED.
Once that was fixed, I was able to send the code and it cycled through the rainbow. Super cool. The last light lesson was using these tiny buttons to turn a light on and off. And obviously this was the most complicated LED lesson. It was just a plain LED, but it still needed so many wires to connect everything. It was so tricky to set this one up since there were so many tiny pieces side by side and my fine motor control was lacking a bit. Basically the buttons connected to the power in the board and then they controlled the power going to the wire that went to the resistor and LED, which then had a ground wire back to the board. But once it was all in place, I ran the program and everything worked fine. When I pushed the buttons, they turned the LED on and off. The next two lessons were almost identical in physical setup. First I did the active buzzer. The active buzzer has a little oscillating source inside that gets electrified and makes sound. It was a pretty simple setup with just a wire for power and ground. When I sent the code in, I was kind of surprised at how loud it got. The passive buzzer had more involved code, since it modulates the frequency to create different sounds. The physical setup was similar, but the end result was obviously different. It was kind of cool to hear a musical scale coming from this tiny little thing. Sorry about the sound quality. Lesson eight involved a tilt ball switch. The tilt sensor has a small ball inside a cylinder, and when the ball moves on and off of those conductive poles, it essentially throws a switch and sends the signal to indicate a change in incline. This project also only took a couple wires for power and ground. Once the code was loaded, it was easy to see that any movement changed the light indicator. The servo lesson was for using electrical pulses to control a geared motor. had a ground wire, a power wire, and a signal wire to tell the motor which way to go. It was kind of cool to see that tiny little motor spin back and forth.
And finally, I tried the ultrasonic sensor module. This device is for using a pulse signal to detect the distance of obstacles. So it's essentially like sonar. There are four wires, the power on the ground, and then one wire to send out a wave and the other to receive the reflection. Once it was connected, I pulled up the serial monitor in the program to see the output. It seemed to be pretty good at at least showing if my hand was closer or farther away from the sensor. I'm not positive about its accuracy on distance. This was a pretty fun little project kit to learn a bit more about the basics of electricity and programming. I'm excited to try more projects in the future. Thanks for watching.